Iman Sarhan, Professor of Internal Medicine and, and Nephrology in Shams University. Uh, Professor Dr. Iman will talk about hypertension in uh, chronic kidney disease population. Uh, thank you, Professor Huayda, for introducing me. Uh, our talk today, I think that's a long day, long journey, or a few for more uh, uh, subject and the lecture. Uh, our subject about hypertension and the kidney. Uh, actually, uh, uh, this is agenda, this is introduction, hypertension, the prevalence, diagnosis, and hypertension, CKD, management of hypertension, CKD, and hypertension in dialysis patients. Uh, number one uh, risk factor all over the world is hypertension. It accounts about 12.8% total deaths worldwide. This accounts about 7.5 million deaths annually. And uh, the uh, blood pressure raised uh, gradually, and I think the rise is too much. It's from uh, 540 million in 1975 to 1 billion in uh, 2015. And this is the changes in male and female. And our area is about from 20 to 30 uh, percent worldwide. Uh, uh, national kidney uh, disease uh, uh, that the people at risk for CKD is 73 million. Individual with CKD is 26 million, about one in every seven persons. And individual with end stage renal disease, about 600,000 uh, 600, uh, 600, uh, 600, uh, 600, persons. Uh, the guidelines for diagnosis and uh, stratify hypertension is too much and you know that there is uh, controversies about the staging and the start and everything but the, what we know uh, most of the time that it, it's the uh, uh, diagnosis of hypertension in grade 1 is about over 140 over 90. This is the standard for most of guidelines, except the American College of Cardiology, which considers a pre-hypertension patient from 130 to 139 to over 80 over 89 to be stage one hypertension, and I think we will know the cause later. Uh, hypertension, as I tell, uh, above 140 over 90, uh, the measurement of hypertension and diagnosis is difficult, actually. You need to make uh, uh, repeat measures. You need to make two measures or more in three or more uh, occasions for the patient. And I need to uh, make this repeated visit to be as office uh, uh, blood pressure monitoring or ambulatory blood pressure monitoring or home blood pressure monitoring. This is, is a most important now. And we consider the ambulatory uh, blood pressure of 130 over 80 equal to 140 over 90, equal to 135 over 85 for whom blood pressure measure. Standardization is very important. I need to take uh, uh, measurement while the patient is seated at rest, uh, supported uh, back, supported leg, not crossing leg, supported hand, and this is a very important must be with appropriate what's thank you and I'm a dosage and a dosage and a bad
انا ما خدتش لسه دقيقه يعني Uh, we need to use also appropriate uh, size cuff for the patient to make the standardization is good. This is important for measuring blood pressure. Uh, raised blood pressure is an important risk factor for cardiovascular and uh, chronic kidney disease. This is a very important fact. And now we know that the kidney maybe is a cause or a victim of hypertension. Um, Hyper, uh, the kidney is a victim of hypertension. This is known by that the hypertension is the first cause of end-stage renal disease in Egypt, and this is the evidence, and the second cause of end-stage renal disease worldwide. So, kidney is a victim of hypertension. Uh, this is the pathogenesis, I will not go through, but I will ask uh, someone, which is the important component of blood pressure uh, to make progression in end-stage renal disease and cardiovascular disease. Is it the systolic or the diastolic? Actually, studies say that systolic rather than diastolic has greater risk of progression of cardiovascular and CKD progression. This is chronic kidney disease or care with either uh, with hypertension, either benign nephrosclerosis or after malignant nephrosclerosis. Uh, also, uh, prevalence of hypertension is very high in a patient with chronic kidney disease. We found here that when the stage of chronic kidney disease is increased, the prevalence of hypertension becomes more. So reaching 80 to 85 percent of patients with end stage renal disease has hypertension. The presence of hypertension actually is a cause of a resistant hypertension. So, this is uh, most important. And in National Kidney <coughs> World Day in 2009, they have stated that hypertension and the kidney is a marriage uh, that should be prevented, which is very difficult. This is a pathogenesis, I will not go through, but how we can uh, stop this uh, marriage? I think this is, uh, we will, the answer is the benefit of treatment. The treatment of hypertension, decreasing the hypertension will lead to decrease the proteinuria, decrease proteinuria, decrease the glomerular injury, decrease hypertension, decrease the glomerular injury, decrease the tubular injury, and both will decrease the GFR loss and progression to end stage renal disease. This is the answer. We usually stratify patients with hypertension according to risk factor and uh, rates of hypertension. Uh, and make it according to risk factor, maybe stage one, which is uncomplicated, without risk factor, or one or two, up to three risk factor. And stage two, we have hypertensive mediated organ damage, CKD grade three, or diabetes without organ damage. Stage three, established coronary uh, cardiovascular disease. Uh, stage four, CKD and diabetes mellitus with organ damage. And this is the risk factor, and this will help us to uh, uh, Manage for management and treatment. Uh, usually, uh, the treatment of hypertension, the high normal blood pressure, this is a matter of debate about uh, uh, European and uh, American uh, guidelines. Uh, here in European guidelines, they ask for lifestyle uh, modification for this group and advise treatment if the patient has uh, cardiovascular uh, risk factor or coronary artery disease. And this is exactly what is uh, uh, seated or called by uh, American College of Cardiology. They state that this stage is uh, stage one, and they treat only if there is uh, cardiovascular risk. Uh, the other grades from uh, grade uh, one, hypertension, lifestyle modification. If low risk, we can uh, uh, stay for lifestyle modification three to six months. But if it is high risk for cardiovascular or hypertension mediated organ damage, you will start immediately uh, drugs blood beside lifestyle modification. Lifestyle modification is advised with all plus immediate uh, drug treatment in other states, aiming to reduce our reaching the target in uh, three months.
Uh, what is lifestyle modification? What is the strength? Dash diet, which decreases uh, blood pressure from 8 to 15, 14 minutes, uh, 14 millimeter mercury. Actually, we need to avoid the junk food, avoid smoking, uh, decrease salt to 2.4 gram uh, sodium, uh, exercise, exercise and uh, weight loss. Every 10 kilogram of weight loss decrease the blood pressure by 5 to 20 millimeter mercury. Exercise decrease the blood pressure by 4 to 9 millimeter mercury. Uh, actually, lifestyle is now evidenced by most of guidelines. Uh, it Take level 1A in the European Society, uh, National Drug Committee 8 also, uh, but American College maybe they advise drug beside lifestyle and not leave it for alone. Uh, what is the optimal blood pressure? Uh, we have maybe uh, two uh, study which compare the intensive uh, blood pressure control versus the standard uh, blood pressure control. And uh, this is the accurate study, and the beneficial effect of accurate study is decrease the total and non-fatal stroke. But cardiovascular is not uh, too much significant. But as regards spread uh, uh, study, systolic blood pressure intervention trial, they compare the standard also uh, uh, control blood pressure versus the uh, intensive control and they found that cardiovascular decreased by 25% and all-cause mortality decreased by 27%. I think this is uh, released uh, just before the guidelines of American College of uh, Cardiology, at which they decrease the level for uh, diagnosis, the blood pressure and the start of treatment. And later on, I think this also will affect our, our affecting the target blood pressure we need to reach. Uh, different guidelines, the Canadian, uh, the blood pressure less than 140 over 90 uh, with CKD with or without diabetes. If uh, CKD with diabetes and the proteinuria, they decrease it to 130 over 80. Uh, American uh, Diabetes uh, Association, uh, less than 140 over 90 and less than 130 over 90 if risk of atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease. CDP in uh, 2012, less than 140 over 90 if CKT without proteinuria decreased to 130 over 90 if there is proteinuria or with CKT. Uh, Arabian Society of uh, Heart Association and Arabian Society of Cardiology 2018, less than 140 to 130 over from 80 to 70 if tolerated. Uh, this is uh, if CKT plus or minus proteinuria plus or minus diabetes, but not go below 120. American College of Cardiology less than 130 over 80. I think now we can reach target less than 130 over 80 with ease. Uh, the strategy usually uh, dual therapy is uh, recommended, ACE or ARBIS plus uh, calcium channel uh, or diuretic. Step two, they use treble therapy, ACE or R plus calcium channel plus diuretic. Step three, resistant cases use the three plus aldosterone antagonist and spironolactone and other diuretic and consider the beta blocker and consider alpha blocker. And beta blocker also can be considered uh, uh, earlier for any uh, cause for cardiology like AF, like heart failure, like angina, anything like that. Uh, we will go to hypertension in dialysis patient. Uh, usually the prevalence of hypertension in dialysis patient is very high, reaching 86%. And they consider 150 over 85 is a, a cutoff of diagnosis of hypertension on dialysis. But actually here they use the pre-dialysis systolic blood pressure. The pre-dialysis systolic blood pressure is not so accurate so, many or most of guidelines don't recommend the use of pre- or post-dialysis blood pressure in diagnosis the patient or uh, uh, diagnosis hypertension in dialysis patient. Uh, but they consider the blood pressure more than 140 over 90 as a cut-off for diagnosis of hypertension in dialysis patient. The measurement must be repeated by the same proportion in uh, non-dialysis uh, patient, 
but we need to confirm it either by repeated visit office blood pressure measure and this must be midweek day free of hinders. See, this is the first. The second is must be out of office measuring by ambulatory blood pressure monitoring or home uh, blood pressure uh, monitoring. And here the cutoff will be for home 135 over 85 and six, six non-dialysis uh, days over two weeks. Six non-dialysis days over two weeks. And as regards retinal dialysis, only six or seven measures can be enough for diagnosis. Uh, this is why. Why we are not depending on pre or post dialysis blood pressure? Actually, the pre dialysis blood pressure reading tend to overestimate the blood pressure measure. And the post dialysis underestimate the blood pressure measure. They found that the out of dialysis office of the unit, the blood pressure monitoring, is correlated with all cause mortality. Why inaccurate? Because why put hypertension? Because fear of cannulation, because of wide variability of blood pressure during the hemodialysis, and when they found they found this degree difference between out office from the uh, unit, the uh, hemodialysis. So uh, it's not accurate to use it. So what is the problem for us? I think maybe we have home blood pressure monitoring. If visible, we can use it with our patient. Ambulatory, I think, need only to be done by cardiologists. Uh, uh, the other option is intradilatic blood pressure, uh, which is the median all blood pressure measure during all the hemodialysis. We measure all the hemodialysis and make it the median for it. It's easy and I think it's available, but maybe it needs more study to confirm that it is a reliable light out of unit uh, blood pressure monitor. Uh, in hemodialysis, I think we have volume overload that plus other like uh, arterial stiffness, right uh, activation of sympathetic system, resurbitin treatment, activation of renin, Renovascular, endothelial dysfunction, sleep apnea, all these kind act as a pathogenesis for hypertension in hemodialysis. We have dilemma for our patient about the volume issue. So, hyper uh, volume issue, high volume issue cause uh, uncontrolled hypertension, left ventricular hypertrophy, heart failure, hospitalization, and mainly to death. And this volume overload, this will lead to Excessive ultrafiltration can be used on during dialysis, lead to interdialytic hypotension, lead to limited uses of cardioprotective medicine, cardiac and organ stunning, uh, and also lead to cramp, uh, dizziness, nausea, this uh, uh, long post-dialysis recovery time, and this makes the patient to out, out off of dialysis. He refused to come again, he needs to take uh, a shorter time, and this uh, carry bad quality of life. And this in also lead to also gap between the dialysis, so more fluid retention and more volume overload. So it, it, it is a dilemma actually uh, for uh, those patients. Uh, uh, the benefit of treatment in meta analysis uh, uh, suppose that the treatment reduces uh, cardiovascular morbidity and mortality in our patients, so uh, the important we need to treat most of this patient. Um, as Dr. Amai tells that already we have a use shape, a G shape for everything on dialysis uh, with our patient. So the lower blood pressure can increase mortality and the higher blood pressure can increase mortality. And uh, we found that uh, the best uh, survival will be between the 110 or 120 by ambulatory, which equal about 120 to 130 for home uh, blood pressure monitor. Which actual target for uh, blood pressure uh, in hemodialysis patient, as Dr. Hassan Shaish said, that's not no no uh, figure which is clear to reach with the patient, but they think that maybe 140 over 80 can be relied. Uh, how to treat this patient on uh, hemodialysis? Actually, the most important is uh, decrease uh, salt intake, 
this is the most important, decrease the gain, weight gain between the dialysis to be limited between two to three liters. Uh, achieving triweight, this is the most important, this is by uh, increasing the ultrafiltration, try to be gradually 0.2 to 0.5 liter per session to reaching the dry weight. Um, Sometimes we decrease the uh, um, interval between dialysis, so makes the dialysis more frequent, taking more time, <coughs> making long dialysis, making nocturnal uh, dialysis, or um, uh, home dialysis. Um, the other thing, uh, we, uh, um, we need to adjust the dialysate sodium. Dialysate sodium is important, and uh, when we decrease it by one milli every two, uh, three to four weeks, uh, to reach 130, uh, 136 milli equivalent, uh, I think it's very suitable, and uh, most of the study tells that it can control or decrease the blood pressure. Uh, Antihypertensive, actually, we need it, uh, we need to use it uh, for uh, patients. This is the effect of dialyzate sodium, mostly decrease the blood pressure. This is the ultrafiltration, and the problem for ultrafiltration is that our patient taking too much water and coming increasing, and we need to do too much ultrafiltration, and the ultrafiltration can lead to increased mortality. So if you make more than uh, 8 milli per kg per hour, this increases the probability for mortality by 9%, then reach it even 43% if the ultrafiltration rate more than 40. Uh, we need to know uh, the medication we are using for this patient and uh, the dialysability of this molecule and we found that carvidilol, Dr. Uh, Hussein tells me that it's already non-dialyzable who can be used in interdialytic hypertension but take care, you can cause hypotension. Uh, Valzartan also protein-bounded and not dialyzable. Uh, Desoxine also um, protein-bounded and not dialyzable, so it can help in patients with resistant hypertension. The extradialytic hypertension, which is what's called para, uh, paradoxical hypertension, by the end of session, some, uh, most of our patients go to hypertension, but some patients go to hypertension, and the possibility of pathogenesis is not too much clear, but maybe related to nitric oxide, endocelin, imbalance, uh, endocelial dysfunction, a volume excess, maybe a clearance of some of antihypertensive drugs. So, uh, the optimal approach for intradialytic hypertension is body weight reaching the dry weight. This is the most important, reaching dry weight. And the second there is trial for carvidilol, and they found that it decreased uh, intradialytic hypertension from 77% to 28%. Uh, 